Alright, so for the first time this season, we got some midweek action that's going to be happening tomorrow and also on Thursday. Now, unlike last year when we basically had midweek games almost every single week and we have like 12 games that is happening in the middle of the week and it was just, it was really tough for me to of course watch all these midweek games because there, there would be like a ton of them that starts at 4 to 5, five o'clock and then, you know, I, I basically just kind of throw my hands up in the air and say yeah there's no way i'm gonna be able to catch all of them and i basically decided to do the the review on thursday because i still had to kind of watch some of the highlights of some of the games that i didn't not able to watch while well, there was like seven other games that was happening at the time uh fortunately for this midweek action there's not going to be like that there's actually going to be seven games that is going to take place we got Six that's going to be happening tomorrow, and one that is going to be happening on Thursday. Although tomorrow, I am going to be attending the Quakes versus Seattle. And that means that most likely, I'll probably will have to watch the highlights of some of these these 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock games. Because, you know, when I'm at the stadium, even though I am still going to watch some of the some of these games, I can only, like, watch one of them when I'm at the stadium uh, instead of me at home where I can watch at the maximum of four games that is happening at the same time now that being said let us actually get into the first game which is toronto versus columbus so this is the first game for columbus that they of course are going with with their rebrand and obviously a lot of crew fans are still pissed off about the the rebrand which they have every right to do so and also you know i know even though columbus of course have rebranded themselves as columbus sc i'm still going to call them the columbus crew because you know the front office they even tried their best to to acknowledge the fan that we're not really getting rid of the crew's name we're just going to use that as a nickname but we're still just going to drop it from from the the name when you actually see see it see it on their website and i think that's what gets a lot of crew fans very upset because you know there should be no reason that that name should should be dropped in the main page and that it, it just does not make sense why they decided to join join the the trend where it seems like there's more teams that he started to think about dropping their their nickname and now just go with a boring generic european soccer name like columbus sc or or uh, as we 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 saw with montreal go with cf montreal but in this game, it's going to start at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. The actual kickoff time is at 7.08 p.m. local time. This game also is going to be taking place at Explorer Stadium in Orlando. Toronto, of course, one of four MLS teams that are still searching for their first win of the season as their record is 0-1-2. While Columbus, they did get their first win last week as they won 3-1 against DC United at home to improve their record to 1-2-0. Uh, top goal scored for both of these teams for Toronto so far. They only scored four goals this season. And those four goals scored are Jonathan Osorio, Luke Singh, Richie Larea, and Marky Delgado. All with one goal apiece. And while for Columbus, even though they did score three goals in the last game, which was their first three goals they've scored this season, they've only had, had one actual goal, goal scored on this team. That is Lucas Zarian with one goal because the other two goals was actually own goal from DC United. So... Yeah, you know, this is a game that obviously I think Columbus would be favored coming into this one. Although, you know, this is a game where, you know, it's going to really test whether or not if Columbus can can maybe maybe figure out the, the issue that they had last season, which is their, their poor road record. And, you know, so far they have played, I think, one road game so far and they haven't been able to, to get a resort in terms of that road, road game. And for Toronto, obviously they're hoping hoping that that with their new new signing Jefferson Soteldo who I'm not quite sure if he's going to start again in in this one I mean he did came off the bench in the the last game and I kind of do feel sorry for for his debut because he literally was basically asked to to basically carry the team and I feel like as soon as he was subbed in in that that game against the Red Bulls it basically Chris Armas is just told him, well you're basically the guy that is going to change change the game and good luck I mean I mean I, I feel like that that's just you know, we we seen seen times where there are maybe some special individual that can definitely car carry a team, and who knows, maybe Jefferson Saltado is one of those special little player that can really carry the t team and can really get t can 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 basically score the goals for this this team. But it is pretty clear that I don't think he can do it all by himself. And also, let's not to mention that Toronto is clearly missing Alejandro Pozuelo, and you know, again. 
and I don't know why exactly they still have not given us any status of what, what's going on with Pozuelo. Like, I look everywhere to see what's going on with Pozuelo. Why is he not been been start, starting or even been on in the squad? Uh, I mean, I know he's injured, but what exactly is the in, injury? So, yeah, the longer this goes, the more that this seems like it's, it could be very similar to what we saw with with the Icopar situation with Minnesota, where remember when Minnesota decided not to tell anybody what happened to the Icopar injury, and then basically that the longer it got, the the more that we think maybe it's a concussion, and it might of course take him out for for the rest of the year. Now I'm not saying for Pozuelo if that is going to be the case, but you know the longer this goes, it's going to be 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 something that we're going to speculate that it could be a really serious injury that maybe Toronto might not actually have Pozuelo for the entire year. But now, moving on, in terms of the next match, is Inter by me against Montreal. So, both of these teams are coming into this game with a record of 1-2-1, and one, as this game will start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Actual kickoff time is 7.38 p.m. local time. For Miami, they drew 1-1 to Atlanta in their their last home game. While for Montreal, they suffered their first loss of the season by losing 2-0 to the Vancouver Whitecaps on the road for Inter Miami, their top goal scorer is Gonzalo Higuain with two goals, followed by Lewis Morgan, Robbie Robinson, and Federico Higuain with one goal apiece. For Montreal, uh, their top goal scorer is Mason Toy. It's actually he actually have scored two goals so far. I'm not quite sure why why I wrote one goal there, but he leads the charts alongside with a couple of guys that have also scored one goals for this Montreal team. Uh, Zachary Brogiarts with one goal, Kyoto with one goal, Victor Wayama with one goal, and Georgi Mihajevic with one goal to his name. So, yeah, you know, this, I would also kind of like to say that this is kind of like, like the, the Fort Lauderdale derby, because technically both of these te teams are kind of playing in, in the stadium and use it as, as their home ground. And um, while Inter Miami, this is basically kind of their, their, their current home right now. For Montreal, it's kind of like their their temporary home. Although I would say maybe for Inter Miami, this is also kind of their temporary home because you know in a couple of years they're trying to to build that new stadium in downtown Miami, or actually not in downtown Miami, but in in Freedom Park in Miami. And once they do get to build that stadium, they of course will move out to their temporary stadium that they they are in. So I guess maybe you can call this the temporary stadium derby, where both teams are kind of playing a temporary stadium and using it as a home venue until. So in a couple of months, maybe once the Canadian government is going to relax those restrictions in the in the U.S. and Canada border, maybe Montreal can, of course, re return home. But as of now, this should be a very in interesting thing match, and I think both of these teams would love to tr try to, to get, get a win in this game. But now moving on into the next match is probably going to be a game that I think a lot of people will be looking forward to, and that, of course, is the Philadelphia Union versus New England Revolution which this is the rematch of last year, first round Eastern Conference match, which New England pulled off one of the biggest upset in the playoffs by defeating the Union and ha handing the Union their first loss of the season season at home last year and also knocking off the defending supporters show just after just uh, in the first round and also the Union, of course. Uh, unfortunately, become one of those unlucky supporters show, show winner that literally just, it, it's a one and done when they, when they get into the playoffs. Uh, the Union currently have a 1-1-2 one, one, record, while the Revs have a 2-1-1 one, one record. This game also kicks off at, or also starts at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, but the actual kickoff is not until 7.38 p.m. local time. The Union, of course, won 2-0 away to Chicago for the first win of the season, while the Revs lost 2 nothing on the road against Nashville SC. For the top goal scored for, for the Union, they only scored three goals this season, and those three goals scored are Corey Burke, Jacob Glesnes, and... Jamero Montero for New England. Uh, they also scored only four goals this season, and those four goals scored are Carlos Hill, Gustavo Bo, Brendan Bay, and, and Adam Booksaw. So yeah, let's see if the Union could potentially get some some revenge in this game. Well, I wouldn't say it's more like a re revenge because this is kind of like what I said earlier this season with that that game between Minnesota and Seattle. I mean, as much as Minnesota potentially could win win that game, it's not really kind of a revenge because at the end of the day, you know. If we're going to 
look at a, a matchup between both of these teams and if you compare it with which matchup is more important the playoff matchup or this rematch it's definitely going to be the playoff matchup that people is going to remember more but you know certainly for the union they're looking to make amends for that and also they're looking to try to get their first home win of the season which that's kind of surprising because last season you know as i said they didn't lose their first home game until that first round matchup against new england they have now lost back-to-back home home game to start the season and they're looking to try to to correct that against against the refs in this game but now moving on in terms of the next match is going to be houston versus sporting kc so the dynamo currently has a one two and one record while sporting kc has a two one and one record this game will start at 8 30 p.m eastern 5 30 p.m pacific but the actual kickoff will not start until 7 38 p.m local time the dynamo of course drew one one on the road against dallas in that Texas Derby, while for Sporting KC, they had a come from behind victory against Austin FC, winning 2 1 at home. Top goal scorer for the Dynamo so far, they only have four goals toward their season, and those four goal scorers are Tyler Pasher, Fafa Pico, Maxi Uruti, and Memo Rodriguez. For Sporting KC, uh, Gadi Kinga currently leads the chart with two goals, followed by Daniel Shari, Ilian uh, Busio, and also Alan Polito with one goal, goal apiece. So, yeah, let's see if Sporting KC can potentially carry that momentum heading that they got in, in that game and can potentially carry it into this one. Although we know for a fact that the Dynamo, they're a te- team that they're looking to try to solidify their 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 home form. And, you know, if they can, of course, get, get a win in this, this game, they can, of course, do exactly that. But now I am going to switch boards and now look at the last three games. That is going to be happening in the midweek action in the last two games. That's going to be happening tomorrow. So moving on in terms of the next match is Minnesota versus Vancouver. So, you know, for the Loons, I know it's bad. It is definitely an absolute nightmare start for this team to, to be at 0-4 and being the only MLS team right now to yet to score a point. But as bad as thing is with this team, and as I know the fan base are clearly fed up, up with with this team and especially with the Heath out brigade growing louder and louder as each losses of this season and the lo- longer this losing streak has gone but you know since we are still very early in the season and that there's still about 31 ga- games left or 30 games left in the season you still got to believe that that this team is going to eventually turn around and I know that's sad is me trying to be a little bit optimistic with this team but that's kind of what i have to do i mean i don't want to just be super negative and say that well you know this team has start the season 0-4 and and yeah that's pretty much it let's just let's just kind of put the this season away and move on into the next season no i I think that would be just just a total negative thoughts in that i think it's just way too early to say that this is a lost season for Minnesota but that being said you got to think eventually this is going to have to turn around and you know in this in this game against the Vancouver Whitecaps a team that I talked about about uh, uh, earlier today that they are one of the more surprising team in the league and a team that seems to be able to take care of business against teams that they should beat this does not give me a lot of confidence that that they could that Minnesota could potentially finally get their first win win this season in fact i think from now now on i don't think any minnesota fans are are confident at all with with this team with the way that this team has been playing in the past in the last couple of games now uh this game will start at 9 p.m eastern 6 p.m pacific which is a rare rare late kickoff in minnesota as this game isn't actually going to kick off until 8 11 p.m local time uh minnesota as i mentioned only team in mls to yet to score a point while the Whitecaps, they won 2-0 against Montreal at home. For Minnesota, only three goals have been scored this season, and it's scored by Robin Lund, Reynoso, and also Hassani Dotson. For the Whitecaps, Christian Dahomey actually got three goals to lead this team, followed by Andy Rose and Cavallini, as Vancouver have also only scored five goals so far this season. But like I said, you know, you just got to believe that this is f- probably the one that, that Minnesota can finally break that duck and if they could not not do so in this then maybe you could have that thought that maybe this could be 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 a a losing streak that that might not end anytime soon unless if there's going to be be a change in terms 
terms of the coaching because again there that Heath out brigade is getting louder and louder and I won't be surprised if this Minnesota United front front office will see will 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 feel the pressure from from the fan base and maybe make make a change soon and it's also you know as I also mentioned last time about this team you know the reason the one of the biggest reason why this team team is in 0-4 isn't just because they they suck both on the attack and also in the defense but it's also the mentality of this team and when that is the issue then that has to be on on coaching because coach when you have a team that has a bad mentality and almost seems like they're not even playing for the team you know that something has has gone wrong with with the coaching and you know I'm not saying Adrian Heath have have completely lost the the dressing room just yet but if this losing streak continues to go and if this team continues to show that negative mentality that they've been showing throughout the entire season, then yeah, I, I do think Adrian Heath has lost the dressing room. And when you're a coach that lost the dressing room, you're basically going to be, be any second from, from, from getting kicked out, out and getting fired from your team. But now, moving on, in terms of the next match, is going to be the game that I'm going to attend tomorrow, which is the San Jose Earthquakes versus the Seattle Sounders. And there's no doubt that not only the fact that I'm excited to once again attend a Quakes game, but this, believe it or not, is the battle between the top two teams in the league. Like, if I would have told you that this was the battle for the top two two team in the league in the beginning of the season, you would have laughed at me. Like, yeah, maybe some people would believe Seattle could potentially finish first for could be at first place right now but to think the quakes are now in second place in, in this season and again i know they have had a relatively easy schedule and they've been able to win the games that they 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 are expected to win but it is still kind of surprising that this is a battle between the top two team in the league and what's even more surprising is that this is not going to be on national television like seriously mls if you're going to try to maybe think about flexing game why not just flex this game to to the weekend and basically basically the the flex uh the san jose versus portland game in the middle of the week well actually i guess i i guess the reason why that's probably not going to be the case is because seattle is going to be playing against lafc over the weekend and you know that matchup is going to be more of a mouth-watering national television matchup uh compared to even this being the 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 top two two team facing off against each other in mls in the middle of the week now speaking of that it's also going to be interesting to see if Seattle could potentially have a letdown. And that, you know, I talk about how there's been a couple of times when the Sounders play against the Quakes. And it seems like this could be a trap game for the Sounders. Well, this is exactly what it is. Because, you know, I know that they're definitely very, very happy about the last game beating their Cascadia the arrival. But now, knowing the fact that they also have another big game over the weekend against LAFC... They know that this could be a game that they might feel like they might be be having a little bit let down, and maybe they're they're looking forward to that weekend's match a little bit too much that they forgot that there's they're supposed to be a midweek game. And if that's the case, let's see if the Quakes can take advantage of this because the Quakes they are well the hottest team right now in the league, having won three games in a row to improve their record to three zero and one. While Seattle is the only team in the Western Conference to yet to suffer a loss with a record of three one and zero. This game will kick off or will start at 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Pacific. And the actual kickoff time will be 7.38 p.m. local time. Top goal scored for both of these teams. For the Quakes, uh, you got Kcal and Wando, both with two goals apiece. Followed by Jackson Yu, Chilfes Lopez, and Oswaldo Alanis with one goal apiece. For the Seattle Sanders, Raul Ruiz Diaz currently with five goals and is second in terms of the top goal scoring list so far in MLS only one behind Chicharito while for 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 the rest of the chart you got Freddie Montero and Brad Smith with two goals and Gio Paulo who we remember he scored that absolute golazo in that game against Minnesota with one goal apiece but yeah again this is a matchup that you know again it's a shame the fact that this is not on national television and it's even more of a shame the fact that this is a very late kick kickoff and I'm pretty sure the people in the east coast are probably not going to to stay up that that much on a Wednesday night to watch this game. Although, as I said before, you know, anytime when there's a, there, there's a Quake game, I definitely recommend a lot of people, people like me as an MLS neutral want to watch as much game as possible to really check out this game because I have a feeling something crazy is going to happen in this game as it is pretty much the case for all the Quake Quakes games that the, the Quakes has been, been involved so far this season. 
But now, moving on into the last match of this weekend. So, from a matchup between the top two, two teams in the Western Conference and in the league to a matchup between two of the worst teams in the league. And, you know, I know it's still early, but I think you can maybe call this the Desperation Derby because both DC United and the Chicago Fire... Oh, and, oh by the way, this is also the, the only Thursday game that is going to to happen in terms of the midweek action this week but this is pretty much a desperation derby because both of these teams are coming into this game after losing three in in a row in their previous three game this game of course will start at 8 p.m eastern 5 p.m pacific i've got to put that this game will start at 808 p.m local time uh top goal scorer for both of these teams for dc uh you got ola kamara tony alfaro russell canals and heinz ike also with with a, a goal so far this season but really the the true top goal scorer for dc united this season is on goal like so far on goal seems like like the, is their main mvp in in this team or shall i say maybe their main liability in this team because you know the two own goals that they score against columbus is pretty much half of the amount of goals that they've so, scored so far this season uh speaking of two two goals that's how many Chicago have scored so far. Or actually, no. They scored three goals so far. The the two two goals that they've scored, uh, or two of the three goals they've scored, comes from Stenek Janovic, while Robert Barrett, who has really got off to, to a slow start to this season, have only got a goal to his name so far this season. But again, you know, with both of these teams coming into this game, losing three in a row, something's probably going to have to give, whether or not if one of these teams is going to snap out of this the losing streak that they're in. Or both of these teams are going to snap out their losing streak, but it's probably going to end end up in in a draw. And also knowing the fact that both of these teams tends to struggle to score goals, you might think that this could either be a low scoring game or maybe it could be a high scoring game too, because both teams also suck at at defending. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this game is going to go. And you know, even though this matchup might not sound like like a very good matchup. And it's between two very bad teams. Who knows? We've seen before in MLS where even two of the worst teams in the league can put up an absolute show and that that they could put put up a crazy kind of game because that's what MLS is. MLS is is a league that is full of entertainment and it's a league where you expect there's supposed to be a boring game that is going to happen and it turns out to be like a 4-3 barn burner at the end of 90 minutes but yeah there you have it that is pretty much it for the preview of all seven of these games let me know in the comments below what do you think of all of these midweek games and as always let me know in the comments below your prediction of all seven of these midweek game and yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time